star soccer, Peter Brackley. It's certainly some experience in the current Stoke side. Dave Watson, Sammy McElroy and Derek Park in all season campaigners, of course. And alongside Watson, George Berry, signed from Wolves in the summer. He's proved a very useful addition, as has Mickey Thomas, the Welsh international, who came from Brighton to strengthen Stoke's left flank. But the revelation in the Stoke side wears the number 11 shirt. Mark Chamberlain, a fourth division player last season with Port Vale. He's adapted remarkably quickly, and Barker believes he has the potential to go right to the top. Luton Town have been well satisfied with their opening to the season too. Their 16 goals make them the first division's highest scorers so far. Six of them coming from Brian Steen, a player many feel is now worth an England place. An honour bestowed this week on his teammate Ricky Hill, who of course came on as substitute at Copenhagen. Steen and David Moss were two of the front men in the promotion side. And this season manager David Pleat has added the considerable skill of young Paul Walsh, whose three goals so far all came in the same match against Knox County. Jack Finlay still hasn't recovered from damaged ribs, so Alan Judge continues in goal. The referee today is Gilbert Napthine of Sileby near Leicester. It's Stoke City in the striped shirts who'll be kicking off, attacking the goal to our right. A crowd of around uh, 15,000 here today, which at least is in the region of Stoke's break-even figure. A state of affairs that uh, not too many clubs can boast at the moment. Indeed, ironically, in these days of falling gates, Stokes are actually increased. 2,000 up on the average of last season. Ball running over the line for goal kick to Luton Town. Never actually won a league match here at Stoke. George Berry. Stevens. Maguire fails to find a teammate, then it's given away to Chamberlain. This is Maguire. Stoke with plenty of players forward again. Maguire to Thomas outside him. Oh, oh that was very close as O'Callaghan went in. And in fact, the corner is given. Certainly, that looked an anxious moment inside the Luton defence. Ball floated over, in goes O'Callaghan, and eventually just scrambled away for a corner. Again, the corner from Thomas. Goes Chamberlain, fisted away by Judge. Shot from Bracewell is blocked. Tackle, though, by Bracewell. Thomas outside him. Now Hampton to Watson. Again, the aerial assault looking for O'Callaghan. He's won it again. It falls to McElroy. Good tackle from Mel Donaghy. One of the stars of the Northern Ireland side in the World Cup. My word, he timed that tackle to perfection. Maguire then with the corner. Chamberlain! And it's there, it's gone in! George Berry has scored. A scramble in the area, and George Berry has done it again. Well, he kisses to the crowd. He scored on the opening day of the season here. And now he's put Stoke in front. There's the corner, floated over. Hit it on first by Chamberlain. Judge just managing to keep the ball out. It comes off the bar, in fact. And there's George Berry to not hit the simplest of goals. Ten minutes gone, and Stoke are in front. After what has been, without any doubt at all, a very, very positive start to this match. Berry, got a free, uh, free transfer from Wolves. Certainly his game has been rekindled by the move. Now McElroy. This is Maguire. Well, Mickey Thomas clearly in some trouble, limping off, helped off the field in fact. I wonder if he'll be taking any further part in this match. We'll have to wait and see. Turner to Horton. Good play by the Luton captain. Walsh, who turns so sharply, surely held back there by George Berry. Paul Walsh, young man with a great future. Now here's Stevens. Away by Berry. To Maguire. Donaghy. 
Walsh again. Well, how about that for a goal? Well, it really didn't seem on, but Paul Walsh strikes the ball so beautifully. He must have been 20, 25 yards out. He just looked up, and well, that is some shooting. Turns away from the marker, and that's gloriously driven past Peter Fox. So 20 minutes gone, and Luton are right back in this match. They've certainly had as much of the play so far. I don't think anyone can have any complaints about the scoreline. 1-1 it stands now, and this is some match. Here's Paul Walsh, his fourth goal of the season. It's Stoker coming straight back, Chamberlain for O'Callaghan. Just away for a corner, by Goodyear. These two teams really are entertaining this afternoon. Paul Maguire then with the corner for Stoke City. They work a lot in training on the one to the near post, looking for O'Callaghan for the flick on. See what they try here. Maguire. There's O'Callaghan. Back across the goal. Just headed away by Wade Turner for a corner. You have the impression in this match so far that almost every time there's an attack, there's a chance of a goal at either end. It's been that sort of game. The referee just making sure that the ball is in the right position. The corner then from Maguire. Up goes O'Callaghan. Headed away. Chamberlain. Immediately confronted by two defenders. Can he find a way through? Berry! Quite remarkable. George Berry has done it again. Well, he didn't score all that many goals for Wolves to George Berry. But that's his third now for Stoke City. Chamberlain again, the provider. Here he is, faced by two defenders. There didn't seem to be a way through. But he found one. He turned from one foot over them with his right. And up goes Berry. The goalkeeper perhaps rather misjudging the cross. And Berry knocking it in. So 2 1. And we've only had 22 minutes. Well, looks as if Stoke City are about to make their substitution. Because Mickey Thomas. Well, no, in fact, he's coming back on. Well, that bit of a surprise because we saw David McCaughtry in his tracksuit top off. And all of a sudden, Mickey Thomas reappeared. I gather he's had some stitches in a cut knee. He's clearly all right. Certainly appreciated by the supporters here at Stoke who have enjoyed his performances so far. Tackled by Bracewell. It falls for Horton. Took a deflection. And only just wide in the end. Shot driven in by Brian Hawk. Certainly hit a Stoke defender on the way. Hawk with plenty of time to size up the opportunity. They're just wide of the far post. The goalkeeper clambering for it. This is Moss with the corner then for Luke. Goodyear and Stevens have both come up for the kick. Donaghy knocked it back, off the line! Oh, what a remarkable incident. And there's a player down, injured in the six-yard box. Stoke haven't got it away yet. Parkin was the player who went down. Oh, this really is an eventful match. Scramble inside the six-yard box. The ball cleared off the line. Stoke have survived. Watson breaks it up. And here's Chamberlain again. O'Callaghan is in there. Here he is. McElroy. Well, Sammy McElroy hasn't scored yet this season. He's taken a bit of teasing from his teammates because he hasn't. He really should have put his name on the score sheet there. There's the cross in again from Chamberlain. O'Callaghan's header and McElroy, a perfect view of the goal and strikes it wide. That's into Steen. Steen backing into Dave Watson. Walsh is going through. Fox in trouble. Did he handle it? Walsh. And the referee has given the free kick. The Luton players can't believe it, and they're furious. Well, Peter Fox still being spoken to, and I think he has been sent off. Well, under the new regulations, the new harsher regulations, 
and I suppose is what the referee has to do. And have you seen a more dejected figure than Peter Fox? Moving his jersey there to hand over to Paul Bracewell, I would think. As we see the incident here again, he's lost the ball. In goes Walsh, grappling for it, he's handled it. The referee had obviously blown the whistle then. On goes Walsh, takes it so well. Marvellous piece of finishing. Paul Bracewell is the man who's taking over in goal. Well, what drama we've had here. Here comes Mickey Thomas again, threading her way through, finds Parkin. Still Parkin. In the end, the shot was blocked, but a good run by Parkin. Hill, great kick now for Luton. This is David Moss. Steen up two, in for Steen. <laughs> Glorious finishing by Brian Steen. His seventh goal of the season, and showing us there why so many people feel he's on the verge of an England cap. Here's David Moss breaking down the right. He's so positive when they come forward, Luke. Looks up, spots Steen coming in, and the header was perfectly placed. And I don't think that Paul Bracewell could be blamed for that one at all. Very now then for Stoke. Trying to send Chamberlain clear. And the whistle has gone for half-time, and what an eventful first 45 minutes it's been. One of few jeers from the uh, Stoke supporters aimed at the referee for setting off Peter Fox. But they've certainly had some entertainment here this afternoon. At half-time, they're locked together, 2-2. change of mind by Richie Barker the Stoke manager at halftime Derek Parkin has now taken over in goal and Paul Bracewell has resumed his place in midfield so Luton it is then who hit the second half underway and a lot to live up to after that first 45 minutes this is David Moss money and Ricky Hill to Kirk Stevens, who's certainly made a lot of sorties down the right flank for Luke. Found then on Paul Walsh. Ricky Thomas with his knee now strapped. Clearly able to carry on, although he does look to be in a little bit of pain. David Moss. Quite fine turner. ball forward from Dave Watson, not finding a teammate. He has uh, misdirected one or two passes this afternoon. His main job is to be solid at the back, and he's certainly been there. There he is again. This is strength, of course, in the air. Dave Watson. So it is for this man, McCallaghan, that fights Chamberlain. Look at the speed here. Bracewell, who got the final header in. And although the defender tried to clear the ball off the line, I think it was Stevens, it went in. And here's Chamberlain again, setting up the chance, creating havoc down that right side. Judge on the fumbling the ball, the header from Bracewell. And there's Stevens trying to keep the ball out, couldn't do so. So just four minutes into the second half. Stoke have gone back in the lead again for the third time in this match. And it really has been splendid fair. 3-2, Paul Bracewell with his first goal of the season. Here's Berry. Two goals already this afternoon. Good header by Stevens, finds Ricky Hill. There's Hill again to Steen. Turn from Hill, finds Steen again, still Steen! Well, would you credit it? 
what a match this is turning out to be. That's two now for Brian Steen. Just 12 minutes into the second half, Brian Steen has made it 3-3. Richie Barker was saying before the game, he says, you know, this could end up 6-5. I think he could be right. It's 3-3, and there's Brian Steen tucking it away, setting up the chance for himself. Lovely footwork. So the goals continue to flow. Chamberlain to Maguire. Now David Moss. Cut out by McElroy. Now here's Moss again to Steen. The way was George Berry. And there's danger whenever. Brian Steen gets the ball. That's the thing about this match, there's so many potential goal scorers on the field. Here's another one, Ricky Hill to Horton. Oh, there could be another one here. Well, what a strange goal that one was. Mel Donachie found his way up among the front men. And I think Stoke will feel that one should have been cleared away. There's Horton with the cross in. Donachie, a rather header and away, Parkin of course straight off his line and the simplest of goals well the drama continues 4-3 now that Luton lead and this is quite a remarkable afternoon Al Donaghy the scorer some stoke pressure now and Chamberlain has got time and space looks for O'Callaghan at the far post it's Maguire Hampton Goalkeeper's lost it as he Chamberlain's in there and it's away. Well, the goalkeeper fumbled. Certainly getting a talking to from Brian Horton, his captain. The goalkeeper lost the ball and at the end it was turned away. There's a shot coming in from Hampton. Goalkeeper goes down, can't hold on to it. Horton's there, so is Chamberlain. Well, now Luton are preparing to bring on their substitute, Paul Walsh, who was injured a short while ago, is now coming off. And on comes Rady Antic, the Yugoslav international who started the season as sweeper in the Luton side and lost his place to Wayne Turner, but gets his chance now. Berry. Challenged by Antic, almost in trouble. Hampton knocking it down. This is O'Callaghan. <laughs> Superbly struck goal by Brendan O'Callaghan. And it's 4-4. Four, four. Well, I've seen some remarkable league games over the years, but this one, you know, for the take should beat him. Eight goals, and there's another one struck it by Brendan O'Callaghan. He took it so well. 38 minutes into the second half. Well, now Brian Steen is going on for Luke. And Titch is joining him. Still Steen. Surely a penalty. It has to be. Brought down. No doubt at all that Brian Steen was tumbled there, I think, by McCautry. The substitute there, Steen, clearly brought down as he runs into the area. McCautry, indeed, the offender. Once then, against Parkin. Hits the post and cleared away. Well, I find it hard to believe all this, you know. Absolutely incredible. There's a penalty, striking the post, and cleared away 